Hi, I'm Paul, uh, electrician at Choice Training. Uh, video today, we're just going to show you how to terminate a double socket. Uh, for the demo, it's going to be on a surface patris on this board. Could also be a flush socket in the wall, uh, like a metal box chased into the wall, and this is plastered. Uh, we've got some demonstration of a ring circuit coming in. Uh, one of the things that these students sometimes struggle on is when the cables enter from the side rather than a pair from the top or a pair at the bottom. So I'm going to do this demo with the cables coming in from either side. So the biggest mistake that the learners and students do first is cutting this too short. The way that we'll do from side to side is this one here. We will measure just past from corner to corner past the box. A little bit of overhang. This one exactly the same. Corner to corner, a little bit of overhang. Now, stripping the twin and earth, to be honest with you, it's a bit of an old wife tale, you'd have to be super strong, but stripping the earth wire through the sheathing, done it for many years, never had a problem. Snip down the middle of the twin and earth, grab the earth wire, pull it through the sheathing, making sure you're just staying inside of the enclosure. Take away the outer sheathing, backside the cutters, nip that away, making sure you're not going to accidentally cut into the uh, insulation or damage the conductors. Same on the other side, nip into the middle, grab our earth, give it a pull through. Same again, keeping it to the inside, making sure that this sheathing is not outside of the socket or the enclosure. Same again, nip that away, being careful not damaging any of this. We've left a little bit over the edge, so when you have pulled through your earth, if you've got any sort of bends or damages at the end, you can nick them off. And the same with this end here. Now usually, first of all, I'll sleeve up the bare earth, so we get our green and yellow sleeving. Best way to do this is make sure you slide all the way up to the end. Feel where the end of the sleeving stops, where the copper is. Pull that back slightly and probably take off about a centimetre or just over. So we have that much copper exposed. Do the same the other side. Again, feel where the end of the copper is. Pull the sleeving back out where our mark is. A centimetre or so off. Push the sleeving back down. We're then left with our terminated ends. Now, as we're putting two conductors into one terminal, I know some people have a method of doubling this over and doubling this over, but as you can see on certain types of sockets, we're going to be quite tight to put two doubled up terminals in there. So two together going in the terminal is fine. We obviously need to strip our other ones. Now, taking our insulation away, we can probably do about the same with done with the earth. This one we are just gently squeezing Give the insulation a bit of a turn, gently squeeze, make a mark, and we're just pulling the insulation away, making sure you're not damaging any of the conductor. Do that with the live. Very just gentle indentation into the insulation. Pull the insulation off. Same the other side. Practice makes perfect. Again, gentle gentle squeeze. You don't want to be squeezing too hard because if uh, we've got solid copper, we damage that. When you're terminating into the socket, you're likely to snap that off. Also as well on your lamps, make sure you're not too short because some sockets like this one, if they've got slightly deeper terminals, if you're too short and the insulation's up here, you'll be biting into the insulation, not the copper. So we'll just loosen off our terminal screws. like so and the earth one here and I'll try and do this also up the other way so this side here we have neutrals so bring our neutrals together slide them into our neutral terminal notice that we haven't got any copper exposing outside the terminal and that little creak there is just saying that we're tight enough. Don't want to be too tight, your risk of 
snapping these screws and also damaging the conductors. Next one we'll do is the lives. Again, practice makes perfect. Two together into the actual terminal. Again, making sure that the copper's not hanging out. Tighten these up. Sometimes we get a little creak, so don't go too mad. That's why now you'll see on a lot of consumer units and switch gear, you'll see torque settings. You have to have a torque screwdriver now. CPCs into the earthing terminal side here, making sure we're in with the copper. As you can see, just very gently, you can see you can start stressing some sockets. Now we've got this up and into our terminals. We need to very gently flatten away our cables. This is where we have a bit of a sort of spring effect. You can shape these into the box and then again come back out and just very gently make sure that one came a little loose, so give them another slight nip up. You can see they're nicely bent round in like a spring action. You don't want any tight and pinched in there. So again, we can go back to our position, socket screws. Into our box. Line that up there. And make sure with your socket screws they're going in nice and freely especially in surface boxes if you feel that the screw isn't quite going in check the end of the screw check the box otherwise what will happen is is that you can end up threading the, uh, the thread in the box and then of course you've got a fuse on the on the site you'd have to change the box but worse if it's the metal type of boxes that are flushed into the wall and over tightening them or threading them you'd have to chop all the wall out change the box and there we go that's our terminated 13 amp socket